Good morning, William. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have about uh, 140 participants. Uh, with your permission, we can give them a bit five more minutes for more participants to to log in, and uh, no we can problem. start at 10 or five. No problem. Great. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to module six of our financial literacy training here at DTB. Uh, today we'll be tackling uh, debt management strategies and uh, we have a very able and capable trainer today. I'm sure he'd be happy to take you through this as I'm sure most of you have been waiting for this session. Uh, William Kinai is our trainer today. He's had over 22 years experience in financial management curriculum. And uh, he's also director at Novitas Limited. William Karibu, we Asante. can start now. Asante, good morning, everyone. So I am honored to make, to facilitate this uh, webinar on debt management. And we'll share a few ideas that could be beneficial to business people, small businesses, large businesses alike, in the area of uh, financial uh, debt management strategies. 
allow me to switch off my video at this time so as not to congest my bandwidth and we may proceed with the presentation. So we will be talking about death management today. We'll be sharing a few ideas about debt management. Uh, I am the financial director of Novartis Limited. We are an SME and I have been uh, in this field of uh, financial management curriculum development and instruction for the past 22 years uh, by the grace of God. And uh, we will share some of our experiences today. So going to our debt management, what is our mission? Our module six, our mission today is that uh, we would wish to enable you to better understand some best practices, good practices in the area of debt management and to enable business owners to avoid being trapped in a debt cycle, a perpetual debt cycle uh, through adoption of best practices. We will talk about some of the considerations you ought to make when getting into a financing credit agreement. We will mention some of the financing opportunities you can consider. The key is get the right credit product for the right assets. It all depends on you and how you approach your credit officer at the bank, your customer relationship officer will at least have share uh, the core differences between a good loan and a bad loan. How do I know I have a good loan? How do I know I'm in a bad loan? Then once you are in a credit contract, you have borrowed, then how can you go about managing your loans? Then in conclusion, we'll just share some ideas on uh, ideally what you should do going forward. So allow me to talk about why are we talking about debt management? Why? And uh, some of the reasons why we should be talking about debt management is because how you use debt, how you manage your debt can make a difference between your personal and business success. It all depends. Uh, debt is not necessarily bad. It just depends on the context that you are getting into a debt relationship. It using debt, other people's money, can leverage your business into financial success. This takes me to the second slide. Now, notice this. Uh, we're talking about why are we talking about debt management in the first place? Debt management is beneficial 
to your business when correctly managed. Ideally, there is an inverse relationship between the value of your company, the value of your business, and the cost of capital you're using. Sorry, William. Yes. I, I think your slides are not uh, scrolling. So, okay, let me check. Let me check. What is on the screen? I am on. Uh, we are yeah. we are on outline. We are on slide six. If you could okay. just. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. So you uh, can you see where? Can you see why are we on why? No, we are on outline just right after the mission. Okay, let me find out what is the issue here. If you can run your screen on full. Okay. Okay, okay, I see it. That's why. Let me see. This should be what I am sharing. So we are on debt management? Yes. Purpose of uh, the module. This is the mission. Yeah. If you could just use the slideshow, then we could see everything. Okay, we're on the outline now. Yeah. This is, we're on why, why we should be utilizing that finance is that it can uh, be a decisive factor in your business success and your personal success. And that is why we are now here that uh, debt, could be beneficial to your business. Debt is not necessarily bad. It could be beneficial for your business. Uh, I was emphasizing that there is an inverse relationship between the value of your company and the cost of debt. So what you should do as a business person is to find out this spot here where you minimize the cost of debt, which I will also uh, highlight. And at this point, you minimize your cost of capital. And it is also at the same point, you maximize the value of your farm. So the issue is, can you find that point at which you minimize your cost of capital? And it is at that point that you maximize the cost, you maximize the value of your farm. Debt is not necessarily bad. It is beneficial to your business up to a point up to the highlighted points. Beyond that point, the costs of bankruptcy increase. You are exposed to greater financial risk. It may not be worthwhile getting into greater debt beyond that optimal point. So one of the reasons we're making this discussion is because of this debt may be beneficial to your farm up to a certain point. So are we together? Any reactions to this point? No, really, I can see uh, Caleb is asking if you could improve on your sound a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me see, okay. So, Thank you. So, uh, okay, about the echoes, I'm in a small, I'm in a room, well, it's not a small room, it's a biggish room. Uh, I don't think there's much I can do about the echo. Uh, kindly just bear with me uh, for today. Now, 
So while we are discussing, the next point is this, that debt can sink your business. You will go under. It can sink your business. So just you ought to find the sweet spot, that optimal point. What is it for that business? So this is why we are talking about debt management. So talking about our objectives, we uh, will, uh, our objectives are to enable you to access credit, to finance growth for your business, ideally match your needs, your business needs to the correct loan product, differentiate a good and bad loan, and then manage your loans better. These are our objectives. So let us first look at the first consideration. When you want to borrow, what are you going to consider as you get into a borrowing uh, situation? What should you consider? A number of factors you should uh, consider uh, a number of factors that you should consider. You can consider just uh, uh, putting on the chart what you have been considering as you get into a loan facility. Just add your comments there uh, on the chat on what you consider. Probably I can give you two minutes. One minute, so what would you consider to, what would you consider as you are considering getting into a credit facility, repayment capacity, absolutely, the interest rate, absolutely, uh, current and future cash flows, yes. Yes, interest, the investment returns, the repayment periods, absolutely. And uh, thank you, thank you. Consider the interest rates, thank you. Thank you. Capacity to pay. So, okay, the security and all this reputation, all these are factors we ought to consider grace period. If it's there in certain industries, you may need a grace period, terms and policies. So, okay, so thank you. Let us just stop it from now. Let us just share a few ideas kindly. Uh, hey, this is where we can begin. Why do you need this law? Look at your business. Look at your needs for the business. Define the reason why you would like to take this loan. Why do you want to take this loan? Three reasons why you may want to take the loan. Number one, you may need working capital financing. I'm sure many of you relate to this. Uh, you have supplied a customer. The customer hasn't paid you. You have received another order. You are short of working capital. You have no materials. Alternatively, you have received an order. The customer has not collected their order has delayed payments, you're there, you're in a fix, you have to begin production. It's one of the reasons we get working capital financing. Two, you may have an issue with your cash flow. 
for one reason or another, you do not have sufficient cash flow to meet your operating expenses. You have to pay rent. You have to pay salaries and wages. You have to pay your tax obligations. It is prohibited. Uh, one of the reasons, especially the smaller businesses, why we borrow is because we have to meet our operating expenses. Then another reason would be in order to finance our acquisition of assets. You need the equipment, you need machinery, you need tools, you need motor vehicles, you need uh, uh, premises to work from. Uh, you need to make improvements to the premises we're working from. These are the three reasons we borrow. So for your business, look at it from the point of view, why do I need the loan? My emphasis is this, whatever borrowing you have to make for business purposes must be tied to the acquisition of some asset. It could be working capital, it could be to meet operating expenses, it could be to go towards acquisition of property, plant, and equipment. It ought to be tied to a particular asset or a particular benefit. Allow me to move on to the second factor that we need to consider. Where are you going to get the funding from? By this point in time, you have ex exhausted your own personal financial resources. You've put in everything you could have put in the business. Where would you get financing? Of course, you have your family and friends. This is easy. Uh, lots of times we borrow from family, lots of times we borrow from friends. It's easy. You could get funding from your suppliers. Uh, trade credit grows as you expand your business. It is easier to access trade credit as your business grows. People who want to supply you will be willing to sell to you on credit. So we call it a spontaneous source of finance. It will be available as you increase your purchases. Your next option, we have a relatively large savings and credit cooperative society sector in this country. It will be a source of relatively low cost credit. Then you have the banks. And uh, these provide you with competitive credit. Notice I have not included on this list the credit companies that mainly provide consumer credit. Uh, as far as possible, uh, it is safer to deal with that list. Credit companies, uh, you ought to be careful for reasons we'll be mentioning. 
shortly. Consider, look at yourself from the point of view of the bank. I mean, assess yourself, look at yourself. Uh, are you bankable? Are you bankable? I mean, obviously, uh, the bank is a professional in assessing the five C's. That's what they do. That's their core business when it comes to lending activity. Even before you fill a loan application form, evaluate yourself, evaluate your business. Ask yourself, how would the, fi the financial institution view you? Number one, do you have the character to borrow? Do you consider yourself as having the character to borrow? You know yourself, you know, uh, you know your reputation, you know how you have dealt with uh, previous credit facilities. Do you have the character to borrow? Let me say at this point in time, borrowing is not for everybody. There are people who would be better off if they stayed out of that. Two, do you have the capacity to borrow? Basically, when you talk about capacity, we are looking at, can you repay? Do you have the cash flow? Does your business have sufficient cash flow to pay the principal amount, the interest amount as per the debt repayment schedule you have contracted to comply with? Do you have the cash flow to service the loan? You know your business income. Uh, do you have the capacity to take on more debt at the current point in time? Assess your capacity, assess your income and your ability to take an additional financial commitment. Do you have collateral? Can you secure the debt? Do you have an asset that you can give as collateral for the debt? Lately, lots of lenders want you to give collateral, for example, a car loan book. It's probably the most uh, commonly asked source of collateral today. Still lots of lenders uh, would want you to give a title deed. So do you have an asset that you could pledge as security for the loan? Do you have an asset, land and buildings, that you can pledge, mortgage, a security for the loan? Do you have collateral? Uh, in certain instances, the collateral you're given may not be in the name of the borrower. You own the car in your name. It is your company that is borrowing. Alternatively, you're borrowing in your name the car is owned by the company. Uh, assess whether you have collateral that you can use to borrow. Capital. Do you have assets 
these are other assets other than what you are pledging as collateral. Do you have other assets? Uh, you are more attractive to a financial institution if you can prove to the financial institution that you have assets and that your other assets do have income. Uh, do you have land? Do you have buildings? Do your buildings have income? Can you prove you have other assets? Do you have shares in other companies? Uh, it would be worthwhile to look at your capital base. Prove to yourself you have a capital base. Then lastly, consider the prevailing economic, social, political environment. It could have an impact on your income. It could have an impact on your business income. It could have an impact on things like job stability, cash flows you expect from your business. Uh, just look at uh, the prevailing conditions and how they could impact your business. So ensure that the prevailing uh, scenario environment does not shoot you in the leg, so to speak. Uh, we are from an election and uh, August, July, I am sure you noticed that business was rather, was rather slow. Uh, and consider what scenarios like those could be have an impact on your ability to borrow. Consider those. Uh, are we together up to this point, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, we are with them. Yes, we are. Okay, so we can continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. So allow me to project this. Analyze what your funding options are. Now, first and foremost, your personal savings. What is the cost? Yes, we have written that the cost is I mean, literally we say this, whatever you invest in your business from your personal resources is relatively cheap to raise. You know, I get a little money uh, from my work. Uh, I can just take that money and go buy some new tools for my business. I mean, I don't need, I need, I don't need, you know, we're a small business. I mean, you don't need board approval, you know. I mean, it, 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 your personal savings are relatively cheap to raise. There are very few terms attached to them. I just take the money and... Uh, Invest it in whatever I want to invest. Buy a few tools, buy a few machines, you know. Uh, obviously, there is the risk that you would lose the money. Uh, you can borrow from your friends and relatives. Again, raising this ma uh, money from uh, friends and relatives is not so hard. They sign a check for you, you know, sign a check, uh, you know, uh, your spouse signs a check for you, you know, uh, it's relatively low cost to raise. The terms are flexible, you know, these would be things that uh, will be negotiable probably over the dinner table, you know. 
uh, you know, we have to get back this capital the, to the bank account. We have to meet our minimum, uh, what you have agreed for, you have agreed to as a family, running business together. The things will be negotiated over dinner table. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's relatively flexible. It could also be good value to the provider of the funds. Uh, you have, you know, uh, I am putting in money in your business, you give me those shares. It's, it could be good value for me, you, the person uh, providing the investment. Uh, probably it could create some risks. You have some uh, uh, friction that may result, you know. We all don't have the same discipline in the way we handle money, uh, it may end up creating conflicts, friction in the family, you know, some uh, animosities, you know, uh, in the family with regard to how the money is used, how the money is shared. Your suppliers, key advantage of raising money from your suppliers, it is inexpensive, it is unsecured, it is spontaneous. Uh, it costs you nothing. The interest rate is zero percent. You don't need to have security. All you need to have, all you need to do is have an account with your supplier. Uh, depending on the supplier, uh, having an account uh, may not be too difficult with some suppliers, it may be more rigorous with others, but the point is it is unsecured. All you need to have is an account with the supplier. It is inexpensive, interest rate is 0%. It is spontaneous. It is available to you as you make more purchases. The more purchases you make, the more willing suppliers are willing to give you products on credit. So the cost is zero, it's free. Terms may be 30 days. Some suppliers will give you 60 days, especially those who are entering the market for the first time. There are instances where a supplier will be willing to give you credit for 90 days. It just depends. Now, downside is that it will be restricted on the supplied items and it is relatively short term, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. It has to be paid on the due date, but it is a form of financing nonetheless. There are the formal lenders. I have lumped together the banks and the circles. Uh, it will cost you something to borrow from them. It's not free. You will pay interest. It costs you. Uh, they may lend. The duration of credit is negotiable. It depends on your needs and how you negotiate and your capacity to pay. Then, if you meet the requirements, it is available. You may probably in the room, there are people in the room who are just saying no to this kind of credit. You have met all the requirements. You could walk into your uh, bank or your circle today and the loan will be in your account by the end of the week it's possible if you meet the requirements it is readily available then lastly there are those credit companies and other financiers these will tend to be unregulated 
uh, these will tend to be unregulated, but they are given credit. Interest rates tend to be relatively high. Uh, what the duration of the loans will tend to be relatively short, despite the high cost of this facility. Uh, many of them, they tend to be rather easy to get, but you find it is like a debt trap. And they tend to be expensive. You end up in this category where you cannot access credit from the previous four sources. As far as possible, don't get into this. It could be expensive. Uh, there are instances where people have borrowed 250,000, you end up paying half a million, you know? Almost 100% or more within one year. So, uh, I mean, just be careful about you know, those unregulated. You're safer with the regulated banks and circles. Uh, if you meet the right condi their conditions, it's accessible. So allow me to move on to something else. Uh, now here you are analyzing the conditions under which you will be borrowing. Consider what loan product you are getting into. It depends on your needs. What are your needs? Remember the first slide. What are your needs? Do you need working capital? Do you need to finance an asset? So what are your needs? This will enable you to determine the loan product that you are going to get. Is it a short-term product? Is it a long-term product? It all depends on your needs. Next, what are the terms of payment? Uh, how frequently do you have to make debt service payments? Is it monthly? Is it weekly? There are instances where you have to pay daily. Is a loan repayment, a loan prepayment allowed, which means that you can pay the loan balance in advance, you know, as a bullet, you know, you can make a one-off payment of your loan balance. What are the loan terms? Uh, consider the co costs of borrowing. What is the interest rate? 8%, 10%, 20%, 21%. And that's just part of the equation. Ask yourself, ask how what is the frequency of interest compounding? Is that interest compounded daily? Is that interest compounded monthly? What is the frequency of the interest compounding? Then most lenders will charge you a loan processing fee, a loan origination fee. It will be branded, you know, uh, diverse names. There's this, it's basically interest you pay up front. What is that loan processing fee? What is that loan origination fee? It's basically interest paid up front. Uh, so you need to consider what is the effective interest cost. And this is the narrow effective interest cost. Then there are also other costs. Uh, 
their legal fees. You're borrowing in the name of your company, as such will be done. Uh, you're borrowing in your own name or the name of your company, a CRB reference report will be required. It will be charged to you. you know, there are those other costs. You take the loan, you receive the loan, uh, the lender agrees to give you the loan, the lender will ensure your life. The regulated lenders ensure your life. So there are these other additional costs that you may have to consider. What are they? They will not always be the same. Some lenders charge the insurance monthly, others charge it one off get to know what are the other costs get to know what are the loan repayment period acceptable with the lender then uh, also consider whether you will have achieved your desired objectives over that duration Will you achieve your objectives? So, for example, you want to buy an asset like, say what? Uh, you want to buy an asset like a motor vehicle. You're taking some loan today. Will you achieve your objective of acquiring that motor vehicle? So you may raise the capital amount required to pay the motor vehicle, but what is the duration of the financing? Is this money payable in uh, one month? This is an asset you'll be using for three years, four years, five years. Financing was available for one month. Uh, consider the loan repayment period. There's something we will be saying uh, in the next section related to this. So just uh, be attentive. Then lastly, consider your collateral. What collateral are you given? Now, let me say this. Unsecured loans tend to be Unsecured loans tend to come at a higher interest. It makes sense to present collateral at the time of loan origination. It reduces your cost of capital to a certain extent. Unsecured loans are riskier than secured and partially secured loans. So consider the terms the loan is coming at. Sorry for the sound of the echo. Uh, I am in a room with some echo and uh, I don't think I can do anything about it at this point in time. I think we'll just have to finish the presentation, relocation probably may not be an option uh, at this point in time. So I apologize for the echo, but let, nonetheless, let us uh, continue with the presentation. Now, also consider your ability to pay. Do you have cash flow from your business? Do you have business cash flow? Do you have cash flow from other sources. Consider the amount to borrow. It is not wise to underfinance. You need 10 million, you're getting 6 million, and you're getting into debt. It may not be convenient to raise that 4 million. I mean, do not underfinance. And then again, again, it doesn't make sense to overfinance. You need 10 million maximum. 
you're raising 15. So what will the extra 5 million be used for? Uh, avoid underfinancing, avoid overfinancing. Consider your capacity to pay. Do you have business income? from which you can pay the fixed obligation, the new financial commitment that you're taking with the new loan. Do not strain yourself. Do not strain your business. Make sure you have capacity to repay the loan. Uh, the debt ratio should not be above 70% of your net income. You may end up straining yourself. So point is this, consider your capacity to repay the loan without straining. What is the purpose of the loan? Must you borrow? Are there other financing options available? What is the purpose? What is the need? Remember the first slide. Lastly, business income, capacity to borrow. Do you have that? Can you pay the debt? So in conclusion, I'll just say this. Uh, have a plan. Have a strategy before taking any loan. Have a plan. Attach the financing to the acquisition of an asset. Have a plan. Then the second important thing, how will you pay? Do you have cash flow? Do you have business cash flow to enable pay the loan. Uh, you don't have cash flow, forget about taking a loan. So it's all about having a plan, which means pegging the loan to some asset that is being acquired. And then number two, having the capacity, having the cash flow to pay for this loan facility you're taking for your business. Consider how the bank looks at you. We had looked at the five C's from the point of view of the borrower. Consider the five C's from the point of view of the bank. Uh, yeah, okay, you may consider yourself to have the character to borrow, but do you have documentary evidence to prove that you have character to borrow. Uh, there are people who have found themselves listed on the credit reference bureaus, probably erroneously. They have not made an effort to uh, correct the, those entries. When the bank does its reference to the credit reference uh, bureau database, they find you there. You consider yourself to have character. So make sure that you have that report. Take initiative, find out whether you're there for your business. Are you there? Do you have a clean report? So look at it from the point of view of how the bank will look at you. Uh, one of the things uh, banks consider is, do you have business integrity? There are people who, uh, I have had a case like this, where somebody wanted a loan, this person was denied the loan because when they just called a competitor, somebody from the lending company called the competitor, they found this guy sells medicine that has been stolen from government hospitals. I mean, 
they do have business integrity, may get into your way between you and getting credit. Uh, credit staff often visit your company, your organization. They want to check you out. You no, know, you say you have, uh, you know, you, you operate somewhere, you have a workshop, you, you have a go down, you have a place. Uh, is it really there? Or is it a shared place? You no. Know? Uh, is it really there? I mean, is there evidence of a place? You know, are there licenses on the wall? You know, uh, lenders do look at these factors. Look at your capacity to pay. This is where now the financial analysis comes in. When we look at your annual accounts, audited accounts, are you bankable? What story do they tell us? Are you already in debt? Is the company already in debt? You know? Uh, how do you how are you how do your expenses look? Are you a profitable operation? Are you a perpetual loss-making operation? How can you explain the perpetual losses? Lots of companies make lots of losses for very many years. I mean, how do your books look? Uh, then, what's your plan? You, do you have a strategic plan? Can you give us a strategic plan? Can you give us a business plan? Can you tell us what you're doing? in the next one year, the next one to three years. What are you doing? Why do you want this money? Yeah, okay. So consider, you know, uh, uh, the financial institution will do its due diligence, you know. It wants to make sure that this money is being put in an investment that will pay for itself. So do you have the capacity? Collateral, what are you willing to give as security for this debt? As I mentioned earlier, secure debt tends to be less costly than unsecured debt. Uh, so what can you give us collateral? Do you have collateral in the name of the borrower? So you're borrowing as a company. Do you have collateral in the name of the company? Do, you're borrowing in your own name as an individual. Do you have collateral in your own name? Uh, the factors that you ought to consider, bank, cons, banks and other lenders consider the collateral you are given then you have the conditions that are prevailing in the environment. Of course, uh, what is the state of the, the economy? We have been having, uh, we are in a drought, we're in a prolonged drought currently. We are just right out of an election year. We have been having some relatively high rates of inflation. Uh, what are the national and international dynamics? You no, know, the war in Ukraine. How is it impacting on the business environment locally? Uh, what are the dynamics in our local market? Look at the food markets currently in Kenya. What are the regulatory conditions you're facing? Uh, a good example, we had the metal ban, uh, the, the recent ban on dealing in scrap metal. It's now been uh, shelved. Uh, there were new regulations that were put in place. However, uh, I mean, you need to consider those regulatory conditions. You are in trading, you want to sell to supermarkets. Do you have the Kenya Bureau of Standards standardization mark? Uh, so what are the regulatory conditions you have to meet to trade? Lenders 
will want you to provide documentary evidence that you have the permit to use the standardization mark uh, to sell a particular product, prove it. So uh, uh, look at those conditions. Then lastly, uh, capital, do you have assets? Uh, do you have assets to prove, you know, that you can borrow? What are you investing in this asset that you are acquiring? It is easier to lend to someone who has already invested and just need some additional capital to buy a few additional assets than someone who is a complete startup. And that is where we're adding there that uh, ideally a startup ought not to get into a loan product. Uh, simply because of the fact that uh, business risk is very high, taking a loan is adding a relatively high level of financial risk. So as far as possible, startups finance them from your own capital, your own savings. Are we together up to this point? Are we together up to this point? Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Fares? Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Now, let us share a few ideas about how to select the right loan product. Just a few ideas. Uh, I have insisted that you have to come to the lending institution, whoever the lending institution is, you have to come with an objective, come with a plan. We want financing to acquire this asset. Then let the financial institution advise you on what loan product is best suited for the asset you want to finance. Avoid, as a business person, avoid walking into a financial institution to take some unsecured loan, which is pegged to no asset. Even if you meet the loan requirements, look, request for a credit facility that is paid to a particular asset. So if you have that clear, uh, you will have the right loan product. Avoid just getting a loan because you qualify for a loan. So here we go. Uh, you need to, you have, a, you have an issue with working capital, take a short term loan, take a working capital financing loan. Financial institutions in Kenya give you working capital financing loans. You have an emergency. These tend to be expensive. These tend to be unsecured. Uh, you can get into an overdraft facility, of course, which has to be negotiated in advance. You can get into the e credits, all these fullizers and emsures and other electronic loan products. The interest tends to be high. Traveling out of the country, 
A credit card may be a good option rather than traveling with cash. And of course, uh, the credit cards provide you with an additional level of safety. You will have a credit card company that uh, for traveling out, authorized spending, my limit up to a certain amount of money. You spend the money out there, they, get, they give you a call, ask you to confirm whether it is you. I mean, there are these controls that ensure that uh, you travel safe and your financial resources are safe. Acquiring movable assets, motor vehicles, equipment, get an asset finance loan, alternatively lease these assets. Leasing tends to be cheaper than the loans. Request for the right product. Financial institutions will have asset finance loans and they will also have leasing loans, the same financial institution. You will get what you ask. Uh, you want to buy property. And here you can get a mortgage loan. You want to buy you know, some uh, go down or some land where you want to develop uh, some premises, you can get a mortgage. You can acquire property through an equity release loan. Basically, you already have a property that has income. So, for example, you have an apartment building, your apartment building has income, it has no debt attached to it. And you can borrow against that property, that apartment building, to get another loan for you to acquire another property. In effect, you're releasing equity tied up in the property, which does not have debt. Uh, this is how, you know, those professional property developers finance their continuous property development through equity release loans. You have su supplied products, you are short of cash. You have an invoice on your hands, you can discount that invoice. A number of uh, banks in Kenya provide invoice discounting services. You have a contract, especially for the construction companies, you have a contract. Uh, to build a certain uh, project for a client, you can borrow against that contract. Financial institutions in Kenya provide property development loans, contract financing loans. Then uh, you have an LPO, Lots of financial institutions in Kenya, banking sector, savings and credit societies, and even government institutions are providing LPO financing at the current point in time. Just do your research, find out what works for you, and uh, what find out which uh, loan is going to LPO financing loan will work under the circumstances you are operating in, which one presents the least cost for your organization. Your importing, importers use this, exporters use this to get payment, do a letter of credit. You are assured of receiving your payment. And the party exporting is assured of receiving payment. The party importing is assured to receive 
the right goods of the right quality of the right quantity. You can take a letter of credit. So point is this, peg the asset you are acquiring, that is the purpose of the loan, against a particular loan product that is best suited for that particular uh, asset. Key thing is talk to your credit officer, talk to your customer relationship manager at your branch, let them advise you on what is on offer at the financial institution. So which loan do you take? Request the advice of your customer relationship manager, let them advise you. I am sure most of you have accounts at multiple financial institutions. Get a second, get a third, get a fourth opinion from your banks, from your banks, from your circles, from your investment bankers, whoever you deal with, get their advice. Take your time. I mean, it's not a matter of life and death. Have a plan. Have a financial plan. You have an asset you want to get. You have proved to yourself you can pay the loan. You're looking for a financial product that is best suited to finance the asset you're acquiring. Have a financing plan. Take your time. Shop around. Prepare a financial analysis of the funding options. A financial analysis is something like this. Let me just go to a slide I had shown. This is a financial analysis. Put a list of the various loan products. What are their terms? What are their costs? You know, what are the requirements? Do analyze it. Put it on. Uh, uh, put it in black and white. Do some form of analysis. So analyze your, your funding options. Then make an informed funding decision. Make a decision on what loan to take or what financing to take to finance that particular asset. The point is you must have a plan. You must have a need, you must have the cash flow, you must have a plan on how to repay. Are we together? Yes, we are. Yes, we uh -huh. are. So I, I will say something. Really nice I, I will say something at the end of this. Just two more slides here. Two more slides here. Okay. Differentiating between a good loan and a bad loan. How do you tell you've taken a and I am discussing this from the point of view of a business person. You're in business, you're trading, you're in manufacturing, you're providing services. How do you differentiate a good loan from a bad loan? So my perspective here is from the perspective of a business person, not of an individual. Sorry, William, if you could just go back to that. We lost you a bit there. Sorry, here? Yeah. If you could just go back to, yes, uh, differentiating between. We lost you for a few minutes there. OK, sorry about that. So we're here. How do you differentiate between a good loan and a bad loan? We are looking at it from the point of view of a business person, you're in business, you're trading, you're manufacturing, you're providing services. So we're looking at it from the point of view of a business, from the point of view of someone in business. How do you know 
you are in a good loan or you are in a bad loan. So what are the signs? Just one minute on the chat kindly. So just, just put on the chat, how do you tell whether you have a good loan or a bad loan? How do you tell whether you have a good loan or a bad loan? On the chat kindly, just a minute or so. Uh, hair covers liabilities, expenses, that's true. Repayment terms may not be friendly. You know you're in a bad loan. The bank does not want to talk to you to adjust the payment terms. You have a bad loan. A good loan is one you can repay absolutely. A good loan is one meets its purpose absolutely. You have the ability to pay absolutely. High interest rate, you know you're in a bad loan. That is why no one wanted to lend you in the first place. Okay? You're struggling to pay. It's a bad loan. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so, uh, just allow me to go back to our slides. How do you tell? How do you differentiate between a good loan and a bad loan? As much as it is very short term, I'm sure it can also be good loan. It can also be a good loan in certain instances. If, for example, and this applies to all credit facilities, if you are getting the loan for developmental purposes, you take an M one, you buy a particular tool which you use to provide services to manufacture. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can look the other way and say it's not too bad. But ideally, if you are spending, you're taking a loan to finance investments in tools, equipment, machinery, things that enable you to improve the quality of your product, improve the quality of your service, tools that you can use, equipment that you can use to reduce the time it takes you to produce what you're producing, which enhance your efficiency, it's a good loan. So what's the purpose of the loan? If it is to improve your business, your business processes, it's a good loan. A bad loan is a loan or take it for consumption purposes. You go to a lot of offices, you have air condition, you have recliners, you have a boardroom, you know? CEO's office, you have uh, Apple Macintosh on the desk, which is probably never switched on, financed on loan. Uh, those are consumption loans. Uh, they are generally, uh, they drain resources. They represent a cash outflow. On the other hand, you bought tools, you bought equipment, you bought machinery, you're using for your operations. You're creating income. It's a good loan you can justify that credit facility. Uh, you took a loan to add assets to your business, assets that improve quality of your product, assets that improve the productivity, the efficiency. It's a good loan. A bad loan drains your business assets, has no income to it, it's a drain. It's a cash outflow. White elephant. You know, these are those projects that uh, companies do uh, probably to be seen by competitors. You know, uh, just to, I'll call them status symbols. Have a new head. Uh, 
uh, this, this could be drains of, of your business resources, especially if funded on credit, especially if they do not add value. Lenders, whoever, whether bank, circle, they will investment bank, whoever it is you're approaching to finance, they will be able to price the loan product at competitive rates if it is a good loan that is based on assets that will earn cash flows. Those assets that have no cash flow, prestige projects, those elephants, no one wants to finance them. They can see it's risky. That's why you're getting that loan at a very high cost. Uh, because the interest is competitive, you do not strain to pay that loan. You can pay it comfortably from your cash inflows. Even the lender assessed your financial situation, your incomes, your cash flows, they know whatever they are setting as your debt repayment is achievable, it is reasonable, it is not excessively risky. That's why it's competitively priced. Bad loans, excessive interest will strain your business. A good loan was budgeted for, was planned for, you proved you have income even before you fill the loan application form. You proved you have income, you proved you needed an, a particular asset, which would earn cash flows for your business. A bad loan is bought on impulse. Uh, there was no plan. Uh, you took the loan because of this cliche that I mentioned, I was going to mention, I mentioned it now. There is this cliche used in our Kenyan business community that a successful business person has loans. Uh, it is inaccurate. It is inaccurate to see everyone who is successful has debts. It's absolutely inaccurate. And a lot of business people, especially people who are new in business, they fall into that trap. It's a cliche. There is no evidence to support that. Those successful business people have a plan. They borrowed against a plan. Do not assume that just because you can meet the, the loan conditions and you can qualify for a loan, it will be successful. It doesn't have to be. Emphasis is this, have a plan. Prove you have income. Prove you need an asset. Get the right financing for those assets. Have a plan. We're still differentiating a good loan from a bad loan. Uh, a good loan will match the economic life of the asset to the duration of financing. Suppose you're a trader, you buy onions, they have a shelf life of three months, stored properly, they could last for six months. You will not wait for six months, you have to return your capital, your borrowing. So for this 
asset, supposed to be onions, not motor vehicle, for this asset that will have a life of three months, get a three month financing loan, supposed to be onions, working capital finance loan, I apologize for that. So get a loan that matches the life of the asset. So when you sell all your onions, you will have paid your loan. Match the life of the asset to the duration of financing. This applies for working capital as well as property, plant, and equipment. So you are buying a motor vehicle you will use for four years. Get a four-year loan. Match the life of the asset to the duration of financing. That's the emphasis we're making. Match the life of the asset to the duration of financing. Differentiate between a good loan and a bad loan. Uh, why you will get a good loan at a competitive interest rate is because you can prove you have cash flow and you can prove that you are acquiring an asset that will earn cash flow. That is why you will be lent at competitive rates. Then the second bit is match the life of the asset to the duration of financing. So the last section we'll be talking about is this. Uh, you have the loan management strategies. How do you manage the credit products that you are getting? So I mean, how do you manage your loans? How do you make sure that uh, you, once you have this loan, once you have received this loan, how do you make sure that it does not adversely impact your credit rating? It's the big question here. Number one, A, understand their pitfalls in loan management. Lots of people take loans and they use for loan the loan for non-business purposes. You wanted to, you wanted working capital finance. That is what you told the bank. You qualified, you got your loan. The money went elsewhere. The money did not you was not applied for the purposes intended. Money was diverted. It was, it was spent on absolutely something else altogether that has no relationship with the business. Uh, earlier on, I said that Credit is not for everybody. It's a pitfall a lot of people find themselves in. Diverting loans. A loan that was meant to acquire property, plant, and equipment is diverted to buy things for the house. It pays for a holiday. You know, go to seashells. Uh, go on holiday. Uh, it's used for purposes that are outside business purposes. Uh, pays for a wedding. You know, had these cases in this country. Uh, diversion of loans happens. 
I have said before, new businesses cannot be financed with loans. A new business has very high business risk. There is no way you can take a credit product, a loan product, where debt repayment payments are scheduled and periodic and contracted. You already have very high business risk. Why would you take high financial risk? New business, new businesses are financed with equity. Raise money from equity sources. Your money and other equity sources, they are there, they are outside there. Loan product for new business is a mistake. Lots of small businesses have extremely poor record keeping and probably even no record keeping at all. Uh, look, we talk about systems. Lots of small businesses have absolutely no system, you know, uh, no records, no costing, you no know, things are done at whims. You know, just add, you know, is it 36% uh, on the cost? That's your pricing, you know. Uh, no records, no analysis, no documentation, no processes. You can overborrow. Excessive borrowing exposes you to a bankruptcy risk. Expensive loans expose you to the bankruptcy risk. You have poor cash flows. You could not prove, you cannot plan your cash flows. You do not know how much you receive on a monthly basis. You cannot estimate your cash flows. It's an indication of poor cash flows. If you can say, I get X monthly, confidently, you have some cash flow. If it is volatile, it cannot be planned. So poor cash flow, uh, you cannot predict. Failure to meet loan terms. Loans come with terms and conditions, lots of them. You breach them. You did not read them. You breach them. Bank could fail, uh, the credit company could decide not to renew the financing because of your breach. Uh, there is the failure to plan loans. You did not plan your cash flows. Then another issue would be collection strategies. You have no collection strategy. You have poor collection strategy. You sell on credit, you don't follow up on who you sold on credit. They are sitting on your money for six months. They are sitting on your money for nine months. They sit on your money for two years. In the meantime, you have no cash. Be careful. Uh, the process of loan management will consider one, the need for the loan. The very first slide, if you remember, we said you may need working capital finance, you may need to pay for operating expenses, you may need to acquire property, plant, and equipment. What is your need? Identify the need for the credit product. Consider all available financing options. You have talked to your customer relationship manager. You have sought a second opinion at the other bank. You have got a third opinion at the other bank. 
uh, you have considered your funding options. Evaluate your borrowing con considerations. From the point of view of the five C's, can you borrow? Do you have a need for the asset? Can you prove you have the cash flow? Evaluate your borrowing conditions. Select the right loan to finance the right asset. Consider whether you have the cash flows. Consider your cash flow forecast and whether you can pay the loan from your cash flows. Then lastly, track your loan repayments. Uh, I, well, uh, something I personally do, I ask for a bank statement immediately after I make some banking towards my loans. You get it in your email at no cost, you know, and track your loan repayments. Get a statement. Get to know what is remaining. Calculate how long it will take you to pay your loan balance. Track your loan repayments over time. Target. In Kenya today, it is illegal to charge a prepayment penalty. In the previously, there were prepayment penalties when you paid in advance. So today you can pay your loan in advance. Work out how long it will take you to pay that loan after you bank whatever you have banked it. Ask for a bank statement. Personally, I ask after each time I bank money towards my loan. Uh, track your loan payments. Target at extinguishing the loan ahead of the loan repayment schedule. That is safe. Then lastly, how do you manage a challenging loan? You could be in a loan that is stressing you as a business person. You could be in a loan that probably you chewed more than you could swallow. How do you manage this kind of a loan? Those difficult loans, it will make lots of sense to be in communication with your customer relationship manager, the person you deal with at the bank, your bank manager, you have access to them. You have a loan. Here we have this loan. Uh, this is how we are progressing towards paying it. We know we did not pay last month. These are the reasons why. Uh, be in touch with your lender, be in touch with your relationship manager, with your bank manager. If it is a big loan, uh, you can even be in touch, you know, with someone higher up in the financial institution. I mean, the point is, have a really, let the lender know what you are up to and the challenges that you are facing. Let them know. Uh, it is better for them to know all other factors remaining constant than when you are just silent. Secondly, if your current cash flows are insufficient to meet the debt service obligations you have contracted to, you can renegotiate 
the loan. You can restructure the loan. So what you can do is that you can enter into a negotiation for the debt to be restructured so that you can have, you can pay a lesser amount. The loan repayment period will be extended into the future. And of course, the interest rate will be adjusted upwards to reflect your current risk profile. That is better than getting into financial distress. So point again here is talk to your bank, talk to your lender. They can have an arrangement. Uh, it is important that your lender has an idea of your cash inflows. Bank all your incomes. Let all transactions pass through the bank. Today, there are so many payment options. So many organizations today are cashless. They turn you away when you walk in with cash. So embrace, you know, this uh, cashless operations to whatever extent that is possible. Bank all your cash. Let all your transactions pass through the bank account. It serves another purpose. The financial your lender will be able to assess your cash inflows. If you have a project that is incomplete, you can negotiate for an additional loan to enable you to complete the project in order that you can begin earning cash flow from that project. Then another strategy that would work is reducing your loan balance, reducing what you owe the bank. When you receive some large payments, some windfalls, whether from customers or from other sources, you apply those towards reducing your loan balance. So uh, it's a matter of discipline. In order to find that spot where you minimize your cost of capital, reduce your loan balances, apply windfalls, one of payments you receive, large payments you receive, apply them to reducing your loan balance. So the point here is this, talk to your bank, talk to your bank manager, let them know what you're going through, what your business is going through, ask for restructuring of the debt, especially when you have a difficult and operating environment. Um, bank, bank all your incomes, Bank all your cash inflows, receive them through your bank account. And then lastly, apply you know, those windfalls, one-off payments you did not expect, apply them to reducing your loan balance. Ultimately, so as not to compromise your credit history, you will have to pay your loans. So those one-off payments, windfalls, apply them towards reducing your loan balance. So
So in conclusion, we have talked about this. We have talked about the considerations you should make when you borrow. We have talked about how to select a loan. Make sure that the loan you take matches finances a particular asset. Differentiate between a good loan and a bad loan. Good loan will improve the quality and productivity of your business. A bad loan is based on a cliche that successful people have loans. It's not true. Successful people borrowed on the basis of a plan. They took a risk, they had a plan, that's why they are successful. Uh, manage your loans. Use your loans for the purposes intended. Apply your cash inflows towards paying your loan, your loan balances. Manage your loan balances. Ask for a bank statement. Ask for a, uh, a statement for your loan account. Know what is your balance. Be safe. Pay in advance. Uh, pay your loan in advance as far as possible. So I don't know. Have we met the objectives? <laughs> so uh, the yes. Yeah, so yes. Um, this is what we have discussed, and uh, I think we can open for questions and answers now. Great, William. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we have a ton of questions coming in. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we could direct all our questions to the Q&A section, uh, William would be happy to take them. So, okay. Just read, I'll read a few as you answer them. Okay. So we have a question from Simon. Can you please expound on uh, much on the letter of credit and how it works in a layman's language? Okay. So letter of credit, how it works. Suppose I am an exporter. I am exporting to someone in say, Italy. I want to be assured that I will be paid. My buyer wants to be assured that they will get their merchandise in the right volume, in the right quantity, at the right time. So what happens is this, the importer in Italy will, we will get into a letter of credit whereby uh, the importer is going to bank the contract amount, the value of the import. Uh, to support that, there will be an inspection of the merchandise before shipment. The report will be released to the importer on the other side. The importer will, will see that what is being exported is going to match the specifications, the contract. So the importer will bank their, the contract price at their bank in Italy. And the bank in Italy is in contact, is in contact with my bank here. 
and they will alert my bank here that they now have payment. All they are waiting for is delivery of the goods. Then once you have dispatched your goods from here, depending on the agreement, you may be paid on dispatch of the goods or you may be paid on arrival of the good of the goods into the hands of the uh, importer so a letter of credit assures the importer and exporter that the exporter will export the right goods at the right quantity and right quality and it assures the exporter that they will receive payment for the goods that are of the right quality, right quantity at the right time. So it's an assurance of people in engaging in international trade that the objectives of the importer and exporter will be paid in full. I have heard of instances here where people exported minerals without a letter of credit and the buyer on the other side failed to pay. They argued that whatever was received was not of the quality that had been contracted and you lose your payment. And probably by that time you had taken a loan and you have no way to pay the loan and the payment doesn't come through because those goods cannot be shipped back here and you lose your merchandise and your payments that way. Uh, there may be a cost associated to a letter of credit in an export agreement. Uh, however, it's how you will be assured that uh, delivery will be made. Yes, so thank you. Our next one, uh, what are the insights on asset financing and what are the specs one should look out for? Asset financing, uh, whenever you buy an asset, a piece of equipment, a machine, get a loan that is going to specifically finance that asset. Uh, it depends on the financial institution, but the financial institution may ask you, go get a pro forma invoice from whoever is selling you the asset. So you go to your bank with a pro forma invoice from the person selling the item to you. And the bank then processes, the bank does its due diligence, confirms the validity of the performer, uh, then processes the loan for you. Remember what I said previously, this asset that you're buying is going to be secured against itself. So you're buying an asset, say some piece of machine, this asset is the security for that loan. It's an asset financing loan. You're matching the amount and duration of financing to the economic life of this asset. It is one of the best ways to borrow. Uh, also related to asset financing is getting a lease where you lease the asset that is being financed. Again, you match the duration of financing to the economic life of the assets. And asset financing works. I have emphasized that do not just borrow because you qualify for a loan, let it be pegged on an asset. For those uh, non-current assets, you're better off taking an asset finance loan. More or less all financial institutions in Kenya, banks and circles do give 
asset financing. There is no shortage of asset financing options in Kenya today. It's a better way. Allow me to have a look at uh, the next one. This is SACOs today are offering loans for furnishing. Would you consider these to be good loans? Uh, are they adding to assets? Now, differentiate between consumer credit and a business loan. We are looking, our discussion today uh, focused on the perspective of a business person. So if I am for my business, how do I look at the loans I am taking as a business person for my business? Uh, furnishings, especially loans that are furnishing to buy furniture for your residents. Consider those to be consumer-oriented loans. They're not bad loans. They will depend on whether you have the capacity to pay as an individual. Now, if it is furniture for your business, you would have to make sure that these furnishings will add value. These furnishings will contribute towards earning of income so as to be enable pain for themselves. So if it is a furniture for a business, take the loan, no problem, but let it be a loan to buy furniture that adds value to your business. Yes, it is an asset. Question is, does it add value? Uh, what are the prepayment penalties if you pay off loans before the time? Now, today, prepayment loan, uh, prepayment penalties are illegal in Kenya. Previously, we would be charged prepayment penalties if you paid your loan in advance. Uh, I cannot remember the year, but one of the finance bills a few years ago made it illegal to charge prepayment penalty. So today you can pay your loan in advance. You will not be penalized for paying your loan in advance today. So uh, today uh, a prepayment penalty is not a factor for a loan originated in Kenya. If it is an offshore loan, look at the contract. It may have a prepayment penalty. But it originated in Kenya, our laws apply. Uh, startup capital loan discipline, any information. I have insisted and I continue to insist that for a startup, a new business, do not take a loan. Risk your own savings, your own money. Uh, take a loan, you are taking financial risk. You enter into a contract to pay within a certain loan repayment schedule. For new businesses, you're not assured that you will sell. They are risky. You're not assured you will sell in a particular month. You're not assured that you will sell volumes that will enable you to pay the interest and principal amount of the loan. Business risk is very high for startups. There is no reason to take a source of financing that has high financial risk. Debt has high financial risk because you commit yourself to a certain loan repayment schedule. You may not have the cash flow. I have insisted, take the loan if you have the cash flow to repay the loan. This is what financial institutions are looking for in your loan application. 
That's why they ask for your financial statement. That is why they will visit your business. They want to reassure themselves, do their due diligence to demonstrate that you have cash flows to pay for them. That is why they will give you that loan at a competitive rate. So for startups, do not use loans. Use your own capital. There are people who invest in equity. They will be glad to invest in equity for your business. As per today's session, I have several questions. What are the factors? Uh, what are the factors will you consider in selecting the source of short-term financing? The need for short-term financing. Why do you need this short-term financing? Why do you need this working capital financing? For what purposes? But the need. Then once you know the need, you can then pursue for a financing option that is best suited for that need. What factors should the entrepreneur consider when deciding whether to use debt funds in a particular situation? Again, do you have business income? Do you have cash flow from your business that will enable you to pay the debt repayment? Uh, that uh, the debt repayment uh, that have been contracted in the loan agreement. So do you have cash flows? That's the question you should answer. What are the considerations before applying for short-term or long-term loans? Again, the need. This working capital you need, do you need it for one month? Do you need it for one year? Do you need it for 10 years? The need. That will enable you to determine whether you will be taking a short-term loan or long-term loan. How can small business prepare to apply for alternative lending options? Now, let me say this. Uh, today, there is no shortage of lenders in Kenya. However, you are better off dealing with a lender who is regulated. A bank is regulated, Central Bank of Kenya. You're better off dealing with a bank. You're better off dealing with a SACO, which is regulated. If you borrow from those unregulated credit lenders, you may end up getting a raw deal. Uh, best advice, deal with an institution that is regulated. Uh, why might small businesses seek alternative financing? Well, the alternative financing are available. We have lots of players providing you know, a large variety of financing depending on the stage of your business in its life cycle. So just, uh, just take some effort to uh, find out what are your needs? What is your business plan? Who is willing to finance the assets that you seek to acquire under your current circumstances? So there are quite a number of funding options that are available today. Uh, and they are all competitive. Hey, uh, isn't it advisable to apply for a loan when a business is just new and is yet to capture market share? Is it advisable to apply for a loan when a business is just new and is yet to capture market? It's absolutely a bad idea. Uh, I have mentioned that before. It's up, do not take loans for a business that is new. Startups, a mistake. You're likely to fail. You're likely not to meet the terms of the loan. Is CRB acting or new laws were made? Uh, CRBs are still active and uh, uh, about new laws um, 
I will not comment on that for now, but CRBs are still active. And take an effort to find out whether you're listed there and whether your business is listed in the CRB. Make an effort. Uh, last year, we had 14 million Kenyans listed in the CRB. So just be careful. Please expound on secured and unsecured loans. Secured loans, you have pledged some of your assets as collateral, as security for the loan. Unsecured loans are based on your income. Unsecured loans make sense for individuals, not for businesses. If you are a business operator, you have some assets, go for a secured loan. Uh, make sure you have assets in the name of the business. When uh, you have a windfall, is it better to use that as cash flow or pay against the loan? It depends on what your needs are. You have this windfall, you know, uh, you, it's not in your budget. A good example, you receive an insurance payment. You had a vehicle, a vehicle had an accident, it is written off, insurance has paid for it, you have received a check. Remember, you already have other debts, you have other loans. So you will have to make the decision on how you will use the cash. Will it be used as working capital for your business or will you use it to pay the loans that you have? It depends on how much loan you have. Remember, we say that you have to operate at that level where you minimize your cost of capital. If your loans are in excess of that optimum, use it to pay the loan. If that, if, uh, that cash flow, if you are within that optimal range, then you can apply that cash flow as working capital for your business. Expound on the existing debt, not above 70% of income. Um, is the existing debt the uh, is the existing debt the repayment amount or now the point here is this. And Ensure that you have capacity to pay from your income. Uh, your net income is a conservative estimate of your cash inflow. I'll emphasize your net income is a conservative estimate of your cash inflows because there are none cash treatments that are taken into consideration when calculating your net income, like depreciation, for example. So when you are determining the level of your existing debt, ideally, you should not take existing debt that will take you above 100% of your net income. You have to operate within your cash inflows. Existing debts, therefore, should not be above 70% of your existing net income. So that you can take a new loan and pay, have a margin of safety, that 30% will be your margin of safety. Do not exceed 100% of net incomes. Uh, hi, how is this working? If I wish to set up a dairy farm, have, con uh, have a contract for milk, the, uh, have the land and infrastructure, but need to purchase cows, could be 2 million. What kind of security can be used you already have the land, you already have the infrastructure. You can buy the cows secured against the land 
and secured against the infrastructure that you have. So if you have some land, you can pledge the land as security for the loan. You have some infrastructure on the land itself, you can pledge that as security for the loan in order to acquire the cows. Because you know, cows are living organisms. Uh, they are biological assets. Uh, they may be harder to price and use as security for a loan. But if you have existing land and infrastructure that is not pledged for another loan, you can use that as security for the loan. Then, uh, on giving out products, as a loan on a 30 day period, is it safe advisable to increase price based on number of days? Uh, now, it will depend on just how competitive your industry is. Uh, it just depends on how competitive. If you can afford to pass that price increase to the persons who are buying on credit. Uh, if you can pass that price increase, well and good. So you have a price for people who buy on credit and you have a price for people who pay in cash. You can discriminate by increasing the price on the people who buy on credit if it is possible to do so. You can increase the price. Usually, I can mention this, when you go to hospital with a medical insurance card, the price you pay to buy the same medicine for cash is lower than the price you pay when you buy the, the medicine with your in medical insurance card. So, in that context, it is possible to pass the price increase to the customer. Is it possible to do so in your industry? That's the question you should have. Yes, you can pass the increase if it is possible. If I acquire a loan to attain an asset like land, does it generate cash inflow? Is it a good or a bad loan? Uh, now, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Is it a good or a bad loan? Uh, it's true, land does not earn you income. Uh, you can, and, and you do not have resources. That's why you're getting a loan. As an individual, as an investment, yes, it does. As a business, why would I buy land which I am not using as a business? Why would, I, why would my small business take a loan to buy land that we will not use in the next one to two years? Doesn't make sense. As an individual, I can take a loan, buy the land, put it as one of my assets. That makes sense as an individual. But as a business, where I don't have money, I have a shortage for money, uh, it will not make sense to get a loan to buy land which I will not be developing in the next two assets. It doesn't make sense. In the next two, if it's not going to be developed in the next two years, it's not within our strategic plan, I wouldn't buy the land on loan because it will constrain my cash flows. And as small businesses, we never have enough cash. We are always, you know, almost firefighting all the time. We don't have cash. Why would you commit yourself to take a loan? If it's not within the business plan, if you will not develop it within one to two years, don't take it on loan as a business. As an individual, it makes sense. You can invest in it. Uh, in loan management, to what extent as debts consolidation loan are viable to a business? Again, when, when is forced debts recovery necessary without straining customer relationships? 
Excellent question here. Uh, debt consolidation loan. Why we strain a lot as small businesses is when you have two, three, four, five different loans, five different contracts, five different sets of terms and conditions. You have to pay each one every month without fail. Ends up stressing you. Makes sense if you have one loan, one big loan, which you can plan for and manage. It can make sense to consolidate the loan. There are certain banks that are very good at this consolidation. They will buy loans that are already issued. So if you've already taken a loan and you've paid for two years, you're a good customer and they negotiate to buy those loans and consolidate them into one loan, give you a longer repayment period, you can be able to plan. They will earn interest from you. I have no objection to a debt consolidation loan. Uh, if you have the income, what can what can what can uh, what can you advise someone with bad credit score, and can't access credit from banks, but needs to expand business? Is partnership a good idea, or fundraising through investment pool? Uh, what? would work for him. Now, the problem is this. Bad credit score is like a curse. You carry it everywhere you go. Uh, even those other investors, equity investors, may be probably even more sensitive to your credit score than the banks. Your character. What kind of a person are we dealing with? Uh, so uh, depending on how much you owe, probably it is better off you just repay that loan. Get into an agreement with uh, that financial institution and pay the loan. It's probably a good idea. That bad credit score, is like a curse. It will follow you to the alternative sources of capital. Where, when a credible bank loan, when a credible bank loans you money, you have not requested and have not make you, and later it treats it as credit, can loan, how can seek credit redress? I believe this most likely is going to be an issue of credit card. Uh, get away from the credit card. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, yeah, uh, because you know, with loans, you will have to sign a loan contract. And uh, yeah, you sign a loan contract. So most likely this could be an issue of a credit card debt and uh, get out of credit card debt. I mean, just get out of it. Pay it, forget about it. Stay, if you have to travel, get a credit card or use a debit card when you travel eh? and inform your bank I'm traveling, I'll be using my debit card. Same controls work. Uh, so, well, get out of credit card. Uh, what happens when I am not capable to pay back my loan at the agreed time? I mean, does the bank offer insurance against loan? Banks do not offer insurance against loan. What should the banks offer insurance? Banks will take a life insurance policy on the life of the borrower. 
they do not take insurance against risk. So if you are not capable of paying your loan in the agreed time, renegotiate with the bank, talk to your customer relationships, talk to your bank manager, talk to the bank's uh, company secretary, the legal officer, have an arrangement, renegotiate the loan. What if you take loan by asset, then it breaks before making all repayments is made. Is it a good or a bad loan? It's absolutely now becomes a bad loan because you're paying a loan on an asset that isn't available to you for work. So that's why you need to maintain your assets, especially those that are on loan. You need them to work for you. Ensure them against theft, accident, etc. Make sure they work for you until you pay the loan on them. Uh, can you please share your contacts for further correspondence? I will do that. Um, could you please, uh, yeah, will, I will share the contacts. Uh, CRBs are still active. Yes, they are. I work for one of them, TransUnion. You have customers here. Help them get to know their credit scores. Uh, to know if you are listed, just download uh, Transnational Nipashe app. It is available. Eh? And uh, you will be able to check. So everyone just take note of that. Uh, how long does it take for a startup company to take, to start enjoying profit. It depends on your business. There are schools that have operated on losses five years, then they break even. A lot of farmers, uh, you may invest for 10 years before you make a profit. It just depends on the nature of business. So what is important as you start your company, make sure you have low overhead. Do not rent an expensive place to run business from. Look for a cheaper place that is secure. Uh, just have low overheads. Don't employ too many people. Don't have too much overheads. Uh, then market, 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 market. Grow your company. But as in saying specifically how long it takes, it just depends on your business, uh, your industry, and how good you are in business. Uh, sorry for asking this question. What if I have capital of 150,000? What business can I start it up? Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, it depends. You see, again, you see, business depends on you. I often say there is no good business, there is no bad business. There is lots of business you can start with 150,000. There are businesses where 150,000 is just one unit of inventory. So it just depends on what you want, what you enjoy doing, what you have passion for, what are your experiences, what you can convert into a business. Uh, so there are lots of businesses you can do with 150,000. Then in other businesses, that would just be the rent for one month or probably it would not even make it for rent of one month. It just depends on your passion. So find a place you can do business with 150,000 initial capital, take a place with low rent, let it be something you can deliver good value to the customer. Uh, the life insurance taken by the bank against the borrower, can the borrower apply tax relief? Uh, the person paying the principal is the bank. Uh, it is not you who is paying the premium. Remember the insurance relief is available up to 15% of the premium. 
and it is a tax relief to the person who pays. So strictly speaking, what has been paid for by the bank, you may not be able to access uh, a tax relief on it. So hello, I call, uh, can, uh, I can volunteer to facilitate a session one of these days on tax uh, CRD issues, which would be very good. Uh, uh, just uh, get in touch with uh, uh, DTB and KBA, but I think it would be excellent uh, to be able to have, you know, uh, to have voice from the side of the CRB, lots of CRB issues in this country. When it comes to fines accrued for failed standing orders, is there an opportunity of this being written off? What are the implications? Uh, let me say this, in Kenya, uh, we can have those failed standing orders and it is not a criminal offense. In other places, it is a criminal offense. Just take note of that. Eh? Uh, but, on, but however, um, those penalties can be written off as a finance charge. So when you're compiling your financial statement, you can charge all those bank charges, bank fees, bank interest, all those items that are charged against your account. You will treat them as finance charges in your profit and loss account. So yes, they can be, those fines can be written off as an expense item. They will be accounted for as finance charges in your financial statements, in your profit and loss account. So I think we have handled everything. Any other question? Okay. When I- Olivia, look, we still I, have a few minutes, sorry. Uh, okay. You can so answer we some can, questions on the chat side. Okay, okay. When I look at our company checks in the value, in the value is higher than our checks out. Our capital investment is even lower from the in and out. Does this mean we are moving in the right direction? Um, now, let me just say this, that uh, probably the best thing you can do is that you can ensure that you can prove that you are investing in the future of your business. You are having some capital investment. This is why we look at the cash flow statement. We get this information about capital investments in the cash flow statement. You're investing in the future of your business. So look at that, invest in the future of your business. Allow me to move on to the chat section. Um, hmm, where do I start? Uh, I think there are questions. That's quite a number. Yeah. You can just I answer don't... maybe five or four. <laughs> okay. Uh, does a loan require a consignor? Uh, okay, I will take this question to be that can you consign a loan to someone else? to pay, to take up that liability. Uh, there are banks that will not allow this. Uh, so it, it may not be possible. So does the personal loan have fees? Personal loans have fees absolutely. They have fees, they have interest, they have uh, origination fees, they do have fees. Thank you for the information. I'm enlightened. Which is the most friendlier bank in Kenya? Eh, that one is difficult to answer. Eh, but uh, I think Machoka, we can comfortably say DTB is right up there. <laughs> <laughs> Look 
for a bank that is good with SMEs. <laughs> and then volumes speak for themselves. If, it is, if they have many SME customers, then they are good with SME customers. Then uh, how about mortgage financing? How does it work? And what is your advice? If you're getting a building, a go down, uh, some land, mortgage will work. But then again, Remember that, do you have the cash flow? So I would not get a mortgage to buy land. I will get a mortgage to put a building where I will do my business from. So mortgages do work. It matches the life of the asset to the duration of financing. So if it is for a building to operate business from, yes, get a mortgage. Uh, can I take a loan for farming? Understand the risks in farming. Just know that farming is a long-term business. You may have to make capital investments for even 10 years. Then after that, once you've made your uh, investments, you may begin making pure profit. Understand the risks of agriculture. Ag again, I will say agriculture is not for everybody. Just as I said that loans are not for everybody. Understand the risks that you're taking in the agricultural activity that you're taking. Say, for example, if you're doing trees, uh, these are trees that mature in, say, 25 years. Understand the nature of your business and the nature of your business risk. Take a loan that your business activity, your agricultural activity can pay. Uh, is taking a loan to put commercial houses okay? It is okay, but then again, understand real estate development is a business. You have to manage those commercial properties. Uh, you have tenants who will be fussy. You have to provide them a good service. It's a business. Yes, you can take a loan, but be ready to commit full-time management, you know, uh, on your business. So uh, this is an eye opener. Thank you. Thank you also. Uh, if I were to take a mortgage, what is the better period of repayment? Short term, five to 10 years, long term, 10 to 25 years. Now, mortgage loans, if I take a mortgage loan as an individual, it will be pegged to the number of years I have before retirement as an individual. If I take it as a business, and if I can demonstrate that my business has been there for X number of years. We are a going concern. These are our prospects. This is where we're putting the money. This is how we're going to get cash flow with this from this mortgage. Then take a mortgage loan that is that will give you a longer loan repayment period. However, because we do not, because there are no prepayment penalties, you can prepay the loan when you have resources to prepay the loan. So thank you for amazing session. This is quite enlightening. Thank you. Advice loan for government tenders. Lots of lenders in Kenya are giving uh, loans, LPO loans. They are there. Shopper. There are so many banks, circles, government institutions that are giving loans on government tenders. So, I mean, there's so many. There are so many. Uh, if you meet the loan requirements, you will get an LPO loan. If I guarantee a business partner, can uh, I be affected by being a CRB victim. If you've guaranteed your business partner, 
your business partner defaults, your business partner ends up in CRB. If you are unable to pay that amount you had guaranteed, you also end up in CRB. How, uh, thanks so much for the session, quite enlightening. Thank you, thank you for the session. Thank you very much, it has been an educative session. So thank you. I hope I have not cut out any questions. Uh, William, the, these participants this time were very engaging and uh, they have a ton of questions, I'm sure. Uh, mm. We will share your contacts with them should anyone uh, have further questions to this. And uh, that's our time, ladies and gentlemen. We were so happy to you. host you today. Thank you so much, William. This so you can share session. the slides? Yes, uh, we share all the slides to the participants mm. after the session. They'll get them mm. via email tomorrow. And they're also on our website, ladies and gentlemen. Anytime you need to refer back to the slides, just go to our website and uh, you'll find the sessions there. Thank you Thank so you much. And much. Uh, I'm hoping to see you all guys next week for the taxation and financial session, taxation and financial reporting session. That's module seven. Thank you so much, William. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great.